Um, but recently, uh, in, well, I mean, you can see how old I am. Recently, <laughs> meaning in 1972, uh, I think of it as recent, uh, Roger Penrose invented non-periodic tilings that have perfect five-fold symmetry. So if you look right in the middle of this picture, in all five directions going out from it here, you have the exact same view. So this is made up out of two different kinds of shapes, two different kinds of rhombuses, rhombi. Um, uh, but it's not periodic. This pattern never repeats. It can't repeat because it's a theorem that you can't have, have a, a periodic uh, pattern with five-fold symmetry. So he sort of broke the rules and said, well, let's look at a non-periodic pattern and found that. Um, but in fact, there's also other things you can do. You can take the same kind of tiles. These are the same kind of two tiles. And you can just start putting them together sort of any way you want. And this, you, you can get all sorts of sort of random patterns that have approximate five-fold symmetry, meaning that if you look in certain directions, uh, you'll see, well, like here, you see that like in some directions you have Things going this way, this way, this way, this way. I can say a little bit more about what I mean by approximate five-fold symmetry. But this pattern has some kind of fiveness to it, uh, but it never repeats. So that's something you can, you can do. Turns out that people weren't really the first people <laughs> to discover this. Nature was the first one to discover this. So it turns out that just like in the plane, you can't have five-fold per periodic symmetry. Also in three dimensions, you can't have crystals that repeat in three different directions that have five-fold symmetry. But in the 1980s, after Penrose uh, s invented mathematically the possibility of these non-periodic patterns, uh, physicists and chemists discovered certain things that are now called quasi-crystals that have approximate five-fold symmetry. Uh, so there's sort of building blocks, little bits of molecules that you could fit together that just fit together on their own to form patterns that don't quite repeat but have five-fold symmetry. What this thing is here is it's called a uh, diffraction pattern formed by shining electrons at the crystal and seeing how they bounce off, or they, get the, the, they may go through it and get pushed a little bit in one direction or another. And so most of them go straight through it, and that's this big bright dot here. But some of them get pushed off in different directions. And if you look around this big dot, you'll see 10 little dots coming around it, or also these ones here. There'll be 10 of them. So there's 10 is 2 times 5. So there's some five-fold symmetry to this diffraction pattern. And that's saying that there's sort of five different directions that this quasi-crystal thinks of as equally good. But it never quite repeats itself perfectly, the crystal. This isn't a picture of the crystal. Notice this is a picture of the, of the, of the electrons that have bounced off the crystal. Um, so, so it turns out that nature beat Penrose to the punch. But in fact, actually, it turned out uh, in 2007, people noticed that there had been Islamic tile designs in various uh, mosques and things that have five-fold symmetry using ideas very much like Penrose's, but, um, but <laughs> came much earlier than him. So, so in fact, someone is able to write and publish a paper about, about this, which it seems a little odd in 2007 to write a paper saying, there's this church that's been standing here for uh, 400 years, and I finally looked at it <laughs> and saw that it had these nice patterns on it. So this is the actual photograph, and this is sort of a mathematical simplification of it. So they sort of remove some of the, the decoration so you can see more clearly that like right in here, for example, this shape here has 10 different uh, directions that are all, all the same. And you, and you notice that this, well, you, I'll, I'll have to convince you that this doesn't perfectly repeat itself. Maybe it looks like this thing is perfectly repeating itself here. But then if you look up further, you see, no, it's not quite repeating itself up there. So you, it can't possibly repeat itself perfectly periodically, but it does the a very beautiful pattern anyway. Here's another one uh, in Iran. Uh, so again, this is just standing out there in the open for everybody to see, but people hadn't quite necessarily noticed that it has a lot of five-fold symmetry to it. 
so those quasi-crystal patterns are actually very interesting these days, and they have a lot to do with five, fiveness. Um, there's another thing you can do, which is to say, well, okay, this stupid thing, it doesn't quite tile the plane, but I can take advantage of that. I can fold it up, fold up this pattern here, and get a three-dimensional shape. So you just you take advantage of these cracks here to fold the, the thing up into the third dimension, and you get a shape called a dodecahedron. So I happen to have one, <laughs> just by chance. Uh, and, and so this is a 12-sided shape here because it has a side on top and then five around it and then a side on the bottom, exactly opposite, and five around it. So for a total of 12. So dodeca means 12. Uh, so that's 12 faces, but each one of them is a pentagon. And if you count more things, you can see that it has 20 corners and it has 30 edges. And it's called a platonic solid or a regular solid because every face looks exactly the same. Also, every face looks exactly the same after you turn it. That's because it's a regular polygon. But also, every corner looks exactly the same. Every corner keeps looking the same as you turn it. And also, every edge looks the same. So that's what a regular poly polygon or platonic solid is. And it's one that has a lot of five-fold symmetry. In other words, I can take it and I can hold it some way and then I can turn it one-fifth of a turn and it should come back to looking just the same if you didn't count all these different colors on the sides. Uh, and so after five turns, it's back to where it was. That's an interesting shape. <coughs> it can't happen in a crystal because crystals can't have five-fold symmetry. So it's an interesting question. Can you find this kind of shape in nature? And the answer is yes. Uh, for example, you can find it in certain viruses. So there's a virus called the periacoto virus that has, well, on the outside it looks just like this blob here, but if you look on the inside, it has a dodecahedron made of RNA, made of the genetic material that a virus is. A virus is just a little gizmo with a protein coat and RNA or DNA on the inside, and what it does is it latches onto a cell of an animal or a plant, it burrows into the cell, and it sort of hijacks the machinery of that cell to reproduce its DNA or RNA. So it's sort of like the, the, the minimal possible self-reproducing biological entity. It doesn't really do anything except reproduce itself. It doesn't have any metabolism. It just has to use something else to, uh, to, to help it out in the reproduction process. And this is very small. This is, uh, uh, ten na this is 10 nanometers long. That's 10 billionths of a meter. This line here, this is a blown up view of the thing. That's 5 nanometers long. So that's a dodecahedron in nature. It's not the smallest dodecahedron in nature. There's a, actually a molecule called dodecahedrane. Um, I don't know if that's actually found in nature, I should admit. It's been synthesized by certain chemists uh, who like to do this kind of thing just for fun, you know. What do you do on a rainy day? Well, let's try to make some new chemical. Um, so it has, if you look at it, it has 20 carbon atoms, which are these, shown as these sort of big bluish things, and then it has 20 hydrogen atoms as well. So all the carbon atoms there form the corners of a dodecahedron. And also all the hydrogen atoms form a, the corners of a larger dodecahedron. It's interesting to look at the journal where they describe how they made this stuff. It actually reminds me of what I was doing today. I, wasn't, I didn't take this thing on the plane when I came over here. I had to assemble it today. I had to stick in all these pieces together. But these guys were a lot better than me because they were able to coax these molecules by a, some sequence of reactions to sort of build themselves up into form, forming a dodecahedron, which is just an, shows you how good chemists are these days to, to dream up reactions that will build pretty much anything that's, that's possible. Um, 